December 7 marks the 81st anniversary of the bombing of Pearl Harbour, a surprise military strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service on the US naval base. Joining me live now for more is historian Matt McLaughlin to talk through this. Matt, thanks very much for your time. It was an extraordinary moment in history. It had so many ramifications eventually. I think perhaps what's most surprising when you look back at this is it's a surprise attack because Japan and the US were actually in peace negotiations. They were indeed, and you're certainly right about it being a, a, a huge moment in not just the Second World War history, but world world history. This was a, an event that plunged the world into the Pacific War, and we were already fighting a huge war against the Germans in Europe, and now we had a second front which opened in the Pacific, and as we well know, the Pacific chapter of the war was one of the bloodiest chapters of the entire Second World War. But you're quite right, the surprise factor was huge. The Americans and the Japanese, although there was a lot of tension, and in reality there was probably an expectation that at some stage it would lead to war, there was no suspicion that the Japanese would launch such an audacious attack. And the feeling was the Japanese would try and fight close to their home islands if they, if they had the opportunity. So it did catch the US completely off guard and within short order, the whole world had been plunged into the Pacific War. The US didn't want to enter the Second World War. They'd been in the first, you know, the economy was booming over there. And what the other interesting part about this, they were so reluctant to enter on a massive scale that after this act, they declared war on Japan. I mean, war had been declared on them. But there still wasn't a declaration of, of war from the US on Germany and Italy until Hitler declared war on the US. So at that point, finally, that the beast was shaken, if you like. Yeah, it's a great point. I think uh, it must go down as, as one of the greatest mistakes Hitler made of many mistakes was the declaration of war against the US because from that moment there was very little chance the Axis powers were going to, to be successful in the Second World War. Both the military and the economic might of the US was enormous, considerably larger than it had been during the First World War and it was the US interjection in the First World War that, that in many ways shifted the balance of that conflict. So. I, I think you're absolutely right. It was it was surprising the Japanese chose this path to attack America, to go on the front foot against America. And there was a lot of political wrangling behind the scenes as to whether America would get involved in the war against Germany. Uh, but uh, Hitler made that decision for them when he declared war on uh, on America as, uh, as part of uh, his support for Japan. So a very complicated time. Mm. But once those wheels were in motion, uh, the writing was effectively yeah. on the wall for the, for the Axis powers. Eventually it was... Yeah, of course, US troops landing on the beaches there of Normandy. Uh, the other, so, so the attack itself, there was a fair amount of success. They sunk quite a few crucial US ships, um, battleships as well. It didn't quite perhaps cause the damage Japan was hoping, though, because afterwards we saw a, a series of significant uh, fights, naval battles in the Pacific, and it was seesawing a bit, but the US eventually able to put Japan on the back foot with the help, of course, of allies. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think when we look back through the lens of more than 80 years, we remember the closing stages of the Second World War and the absolute destruction of Berlin and Tokyo and the, the dropping of the atomic bombs. And, and, and I think that skews our vision somewhat of the Second World War. And I, I think if we transported ourselves back to late 1941, early, even early 1942, it would be very difficult to predict how that war was actually going to end because the Axis powers between Germany and Japan were well on top of the Allies. And I think Pearl Harbor was mm. the greatest example of that. And in spite of the ramifications of Pearl Harbor and the fact that it mobilised America against the Japanese, we shouldn't take anything away from the fact that this was a very successful attack and a little bit misunderstood. Yeah. The main thing the Japanese were trying to do was turn the American public against the idea of going to war. So in that respect, blowing up and sinking a number of prime American battleships, which were named after American states, uh, was hoped by the Japanese that it would be a very big PR blow for the Americans and that it would uh, reduce the American uh, likelihood to come into the war. Obviously, that was a terrible misjudgment and it galvanised public opinion yeah. against them. But in the late days of 1941, it did seem to the Japanese like their only option. And, of course, don't forget the feeling in Australia at the time was not, great, here's the US in the war and I'm sure it will eventually flex its muscle. It was a weakened US, 
us feeling more vulnerable to um, the Japanese. And, you know, General Tojo uh, back then, a real warmonger, there was discussion amongst him, we know now, and some of his military advisers on what to do with the Australia issue, a, a conquering, a cutting us off from the rest of the world at the very least, perhaps. Yes, and let's not forget that at the same time as the attack was launched on Pearl Harbour, the Japanese also launched a massive land campaign through Asia, and that came down as far as Malaya and the first Australian troops to be involved in fighting against the Japanese uh, was effectively the same time as Pearl Harbor was going on. So it had a direct effect on Australia and also an ongoing effect because for the first time, Australia felt directly threatened by the Japanese mm. uh, on our doorstep. So even though we'd always been great citizens of the world and participated in the First World War and other conflicts, this was the first time the fight came to us. And it was a, a terrifying time for the Australians of 1942 with the threat of Japanese invasion, or so it seemed, uh, right on our doorstep. Some of the, the propaganda photos are fascinating when you see the, the calls to Australian arms to, to um, avoid the potential peril of the Japanese forces. So you get an insight into the mindset at the time. Matt, great to get your thoughts today. Thank you. Thanks for your time.